the fifth Uganda presidential election, 2006. The presidential election of 2006 was the worst case of any democratic election that took place in Uganda. It was the worst crossroad for the opposition leader, Kiza Besigye, who challenged the NRM candidate for the presidency. In the last four elections, since 2001, the government has, on each occasion, reached the election. The opposition leaders went to Supreme Court two times. But they didn't achieve anything at all. The men of law that were to protect the people of Uganda decided to protect the president of Uganda. That is the man who pays their salary, and there is no doubt about it. The election was the worst case of stealing votes. It was the worst election that ever took place. NRM claim that they went to the bush. They fought the bush war. They fought for our freedom and they used guns to terrorize Ugandans during election. I do believe that the best way out is to prepare ourselves to fight for our country with all without election. After the 2006 election, a lot of generals started leaving the animal farm. And those generals, when they come out, they tell you, that the election of 2006 was stolen from the opposition leader. But I begin to wonder, I begin to ask myself, why did those generals who left the animal farm are now coming out to tell Ugandans that the vote, the presidential election of 2006 was rigged. What took them so long before coming out to tell Ugandans that, dear fellow Ugandans, this is what we cannot accept anymore. But the same general, when they come out, 
they start their own party. And they know that the man reached the election of 2006. And here you come and start your own political party. How are you going to give us Ugandans a little bit of confidence that you are not going to use the same tactics your boss had been using all these years to steal election from the opposition. That is the question that Ugandans have to start asking themselves. We know that democratic election or election through democratic votes will never happen in Uganda. Anybody who comes to power using gun only understand the gun games. A lot of people had been asking the opposition leader Kiza Wesiji to stand again in 2021. But he's a man who made it very clear that he will not stand again because he realized that only fools can believe that they can win election through going to the polls. That is not going to happen. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with ourselves and let me be clear. You can only fight fire with fire. The government is not in the hand of the people of Uganda. We need to get it back into our hands. In the 2006 election, Dr. Kiza Resige had been in and out of prison for many times. But he kept to his principle. He kept to his ideas, his ideology about liberating Uganda, about giving the people back their power. He's a man with principle, whether you like him or you don't. We do understand he's a man of principle who believe in what he's doing. By telling Uganda now that he's not going to stand again, I can understand how the man had been humiliated. Any of those politicians would think they can use election as a democratic tool to get the president 
out of power are daydreaming. And this type of politicians are just bad bags who are enjoying taxpayers' money and building a name for themselves and their families. They should stop lying to the people of Uganda that their people representative. A retired Uganda Supreme Court judge said that two of the four Supreme Court who voted in favor of dismissing the 2006 presidential election petition brought by the opposition leader have changed their mind and they now believe that the election result should have been overturned. But it is too late. It is too late. They should have done it when the opposition came to them and asked them that there had been a lot of fraud, that there had been a lot of violence, that the vote had been stolen from them. But they didn't make a proper judgment at that time. That shows us, that tells us that our judiciary system is broken. That the people who are sitting on those chairs as judiciary officials are not trusted. You see, what Ugandans don't understand is that every time we have election, the government and back on recruiting police forces, military, local defense forces. A lot of Ugandans had been recruited ever since. We had been holding elections. And after elections, Those military who are recruited, the local defense forces, the army, the prison, they disappear. You don't know what they're doing, where they are. But the question is, we have the members of parliament. There have never been a question raised in the parliament about all those people who are being recruited every five years. Nobody has ever asked how many soldiers do we have in Uganda up to today? And who is paying those soldiers? Where are they getting the money? pay your soldiers. Any money used for paying the army should be approved by the parliament. And if those member of parliament can come out and tell us the number soldiers we have in Uganda today, then I would start believing in them. But they are there 
just like a rubber stamp. They don't know what is going on and they don't ask questions. You ask yourself, whenever there is election, we see the Mamba boys coming out, the local defense forces coming out, and we keep on recruiting those kids who are poor, who have nothing to do into the armed forces so that we can control them. We are controlled under the army regulation. But it could also be bigger than what we Ugandans think. You see the problem with us Ugandans we don't think ahead of time. You see, here is a junta who want to who want to develop his own empire, and one begins to wonder: all those soldiers we are recruiting. Where are they going? Who is paying them? Believe me, they are all in the service of economic eat men around the world. See, if you can ask yourself, we are talking about Uganda as being rich in mineral resources. We are talking about Uganda to have joined the oil world. But let me be clear, the oil the Ugandans are proud of today is going to be something of the past in less than 10 years. You see, there are a lot of countries who are trying to move away from oil consumption. There are countries who have started working hard building modern cars that runs on electricity, not oil anymore. So that oil we are proud of is not going to take us anywhere. It will just be nothing. The value will drop. The money will not be there to maintain all the soldiers you are recruiting. You see, we have countries that are coming to Uganda. Said, I'm going to help you build your infrastructure and make sure that your road, your railway, Everything is working properly, but that is not why they are there. We have country like China. They're buying a lot of materials. Africa has got a lot of materials. Uganda has a lot of materials. We have those materials they need. And they're taking those materials out of Uganda and other African countries. When they take it home, they turn it into a finished product. 
And when that product is finished, and then they sell it again to countries like the European Union, who are now busy pushing ahead to get electric cars into market. And that is going to close the wealth to oil. We can still play with oil for some time, but that will be something of the past. Now, you start asking yourself, why is that? Whenever we have election, this government is recruiting police, prison, army, and after the election, you don't know where they, these people are gone and what they're doing. It is time we wake up and see the truth. Thank you for listening. I will be back.